Hey gang, Ronan here. As you can see in this game we've got Joe playing the Tier 5 ARP High. Uh, your guess is as good as mine. If any of you know the actual pronunciation and you want to put it in the comments section below, I'd appreciate that. Um, this is a mixed tier match with Tiers 5, 5 and 6. I don't know a whole lot about this game other than uh, that there must be something interesting about it because Joe sent it to me. I haven't watched it. This is my first time through. He did comment about the number of destroyers in the game, which uh, if you are a careful note, noter of detail, what you will have noticed there are, yep, count them, a dozen destroyers in this game. Matchmaking, go home. You're drunk. So we've got a CV on each team, a few battleships, one cruiser, and six destroyers. I'm sure you're all familiar with this map. Unless you're just here uh, by random chance and you haven't even played this game before. If you haven't played this game, allow me to recommend it. It's a very fun game. It can, like a lot of games, be very frustrating at times. Depending upon how much of a quote-unquote try-hard gamer you are. There's a certain amount of RNG, random number generator, in this game. You may aim perfectly and still not land any shots. Low-tier ships, in general have worse aiming, we'll say, than uh, higher tier ships, although RNG is still a factor at all tiers. There's something called dispersion, which is kind of the possible width of where one shell might land on one side and where another shell might land on the other. And that's all detailed in the game. Some people don't pay any attention to that, but it's there if you are interested in it. There are things that you can do to decrease that dispersion. Then there's something called Sigma. There's not really any information about that in the game, but there are sites you can go to that will give you the quote-unquote Sigma for pretty much any ship you're interested in. And that is the elliptical dispersion. That's the dispersion uh, not necessarily just right and left or a starboard and port, but also uh, forward and behind the target. So uh, there are lots of things to consider, but you can see those shells spread out quite a bit. And Joe manages to land three of them. You see there's one that penetrated, two that didn't, but he did start a fire. And it looks to me like the ship that he hit put the fire out right away. Maybe someone else will start another fire and it'll burn for a while. Now, those of you that are really familiar with the game, this is all old hat and nothing new to you. But my comments here are really for those who may not be uh, very experienced players. Now, Joe is doing what's called blind firing here. He knows there's a destroyer there. Well, I thought he was going to blind fire. You can see someone else did. Now, one of the things about blind firing is when you don't have what's called a lock-on. You see that little thing around the word New Mexico? Kind of a circular thing. That means you've got a lock-on. Now, one of the tricks that you can use is you can get a lock-on in New Mexico. What that does is that'll help with your dispersion. And you could still aim into the cloud. As long as you're locked onto something, your dispersion is improved. When you don't have any lock on, your dispersion goes crazy. And right now, the good guys are down on points. They've lost the Nicholas. Position wise, I kind of like what the, the the good guys are doing here. They've got the Farragut on the outside, but I think he's going to get cut off. If anybody was going to go outside, I think it probably would have been best to be the uh, Mitsuki. Rocket's trying to get an AP shot on the Congo there. Why? Well, if again, if you're a relatively new player. And there are a lot of new players that don't know this. Um, there are two shell types, and if you're new to the game, uh, and I'm sure I was guilty of this two five years ago or whenever I first started playing, you look at one, you highlight it, and it says, well, it does X number of points of damage if it, you know, if it does well. Okay, the Leander goes down, so the good guys now don't have a cruiser. 
And then you hover over the other, uh, and it says, well, it does less damage. So you, maybe you're looking at the AP shells, and those are armor-piercing shells, and it says it does you know, a significant amount of damage. You can look at the HE, that's high explosive, and it says it does less. Why would anybody use HE? Well, there are a couple things. One, uh, high explosive shells can start fires. And as I mentioned earlier, when Joe set a fire on that Congo earlier, it repaired the fire right away. It put the fire out right away. And if you put a fire out, you you can't put another one out for a little while. There's what's called a cooldown on the ability to be able to do that. So when you hit someone with HE and they burn and they put it out, if you hit them again, or if anybody hits them again with HE, Joe should. Uh, if you hit anybody hits them with HE and gets them burning again, those fires will burn a long time. It can do a lot of damage. So you can actually do as much or more damage over time with HE. It just depends. Every ship, every situation is going to be a little bit different. Some ships have a better chance to start a fire. Higher tier ships are more resistant to fire in general. There's a lot of factors to consider. It's actually a... I call this a very complex game with an arcade game veneer. So it looks very simple, and you can play it very simply and not learn anything about this stuff. But the more you learn, the better you get in general. And with AP shells, you're looking for broadside targets or for targets that have armor that your shells can quote unquote overmatch. Um, I won't go into the weeds too far with that, but there are some armors that are just not thick enough to stop your shells if they're big enough, no matter how they're angled against you. But that battleship, if he keeps his nose more or less toward Joe, his armor can bounce the shells. Now, it'd be, be, it'd be a good test of that if Joe hits him, but Joe's aiming a little too low. There we go. Now, the indicator just below the, the reticule there in the center, it gives you the relative angle of each ship to the other. And you see he hit, it says torpedo protection hit on the right-hand side above the mini map there. The, a battleship will have a torpedo belt, and a torpedo belt is very thick armor. And when you hit those against an angled battleship, you're probably going to bounce them. So when you get a nose-in battleship like this, very often it's a good idea to just switch to HE. If they're going to stay angled, uh, you can burn them down with HE. This guy's going to show a little bit of broadside here, but you can see he's already starting to angle in. He's got the torpedoes to contend with. It looks like he's going to thread right through them all. That's that dispersion and sigma that I was talking about. You see the shells kind of landing all around the, tar on the all around the Congo, everywhere but on it. And a ricochet, yeah, well, angled steel plates will bounce a lot of shells. I think Joe probably should have switched to HE a little while ago, but there is a destroyer over there, so the Congo might show a flat broadside here, trying to avoid torpedoes. No, he's going to maintain his angle. You can see he's still under 30 degrees. That's generally kind of the sweet spot. As long as you're under 30 degrees, you're probably going to bounce a lot of shells. Joe's having a hard time hitting him. Now, one of the things that I hope Joe is aware of at this point in the game is that he's got a Fabuki right behind him. Now, the Fabuki's probably torping that Kavor, but uh, he might be coming after Joe as well. And the Fabuki has torpedoes that are in a 10 kilometer range. Now, Joe probably can finish off the Congo here. The Congo has widened his angle a little bit. He's trying to tighten it up. I'm hoping Joe doesn't beach himself on this island here ahead of him. But I think he did. Yep. Which brings up another topic. Okay, uh, another topic. Okay, so we got two destroyers behind Joe now. So uh, running in this island could be a very uh, costly, well, fatal mistake. Uh, three destroyers out here. Yeah, I can't imagine this is going to end well for Joe. But I think he's going to finish off this Congo. Nope. 
And Fabuki is almost certainly, I'd be switching to HE shells for sure here. Against destroyers, you want to fire HE in most cases. Uh, they, even if they don't hit, the splash damage from an HE shell can cause systems damage. And you can see he did okay damage there, but uh, oh wow, the Fabuki really botched that torpedo drop. Bad. But in general, in most cases, HE shells are going to do a lot better against destroyers. It looks like Joe is going to stick with the AP. Now how can you switch? What's the best way to switch? Well, in my opinion, in a case like that, where he, he was using AP against the battleship, uh, the last volley that he was going to fire, he could uh, preemptively press, in this case, the 1 key before he fired it, and then as soon as the AP shells were gone, the game would automatically switch to HE and the reload would be for HE shells. Now, this has been uh, something of a steamroll. I have to say, Joe's targeting has not been all that great, and the, the, uh, <laughs> the dispersion on the ship is not that great, and that spells uh, not landing a lot of shells and, and bouncing a lot of the ones that you do land when, when you're using AP shells. But this game's not over yet. Good guys are down six ships, bad guys are down four. Unfortunately, the bad guys still have five destroyers, and the good guys only have two, which is going to make it really tough. This is not unwinnable, but this is going to be a real uphill climb. There's a destroyer. Now, see if HE was loaded. Honestly, you could one-shot that T-22. But with AP, you'll very often... Get overpins. I see you get five overpenetrations there. Now Joe finally does switch to HE, and that's going to make a big difference. If he gets another shot and hits anybody, it'll do a lot more damage. Now the T-22 is smoking a line south. Joe's going to heal up ahead of any potential torpedo strike. Uh, this is a tr this is a tricky one to call. Uh, you can see some torpedoes running there off to uh, well Joe's port side, our, our right side of the screen. It looks like just one tube. I think I'd put a shot out on Gaida. No, no, it's just gonna hit the island. Gotta pay attention to it, whether they're slowing down, whether their engines are hot. A lot of things to look at. Like I said, it's a very compl complex game. And I don't think Joe had a lock. Uh, it would have helped if he had locked onto that guy. Good guys are now down to five ships. And the bad guys are in the friendly cap. That doesn't leave Joe many choices here. He kind of has to go in. Otherwise, the team is going to lose because they get capped out. You can see the square around that green flag. No, no, target the Gaida. Target the Gaida. There you go. Uh, is turning red. And if it, the entire thing turns red, and that, that's it. I think that's going to finish off the Gaida. Oh, so close. Keep that nose to him, Joe. Just forget you even have bad guns. Uh, that's a mistake you'll see a lot of people make. It's not that the bad guns aren't worth anything, because they certainly are, but when you're facing off with a destroyer, close range. When you turn to use your bad guns, and here come the Kabuki torps. This is going to hurt. Oh! <laughs> uh, that was lucky. When you turn to use your back guns, you show a much wider profile of your ship, which makes it much more likely that the torpedoes they've thrown in your face will hit you. Yeah, you got to hit him here, Joe. No pressure or anything. Uh, 
for those of you watching, if you didn't know, you want to fire before he goes dark. Because when he goes dark, you don't have a lock. Joe is doing the right thing. He's bringing the nose to port. I think I would bring it all the way around myself. Because you know you got the Kabuki out there too. But this is, uh, this is a chess match. And Joe's really at a huge disadvantage here. Huge. Gotta get guns on him. Waste no time. Oh, those are gonna fall off to the left side. Torpedoes coming in. Now, one thing that Joe's doing here that I think he's doing a great job of is he's changing his course and his speed regularly. When someone launches torpedoes at you in this game, it's not like firing guns. It takes a long time for the torpedoes to get there, and there's a there's an indicator when you're when you're using torpedoes. It'll give you some idea of where your target will be when your torpedoes arrive if they don't change course or speed. So if destroyer captains are using that, every time you change course and speed, you're making it much more likely that their torpedoes will miss. Now sometimes a very experienced destroyer player will guess what you're going to do and just kind of ignore the indicator. We got two destroyers, basically a point blank range. There's no way you're going to avoid all these torpedoes, but I would go nose in here. I would not turn out. I would try to keep them spotted as long as possible. Because what Joe has done is he's turned away, which means his guns take just that much longer to get back over here. Now this should this should finish Fubuki if he aims right. Nicely done. Now now bring the nose the other way and try to finish off T22. There you go. That's exactly what he's doing. Gotta give him enough lead. Look pretty decent. And he got a fire started. Will it burn? No, T-22 stopped the fire, but... Crazily, the T-22 is pushing in. I'm trying to get torpedoes away, I imagine. And that cost him. Here come the torpedoes from the Icarus. They don't have the range. And Joe is... <laughs> oh, this is fun to watch. Joe is able to get away from those torpedoes. And, and I have to say, this is a minor miracle. Joe still has roughly half his hit points, despite the fact that he was literally surrounded by destroyers. That is some fancy driving, Joe. Okay, so Icarus is in pretty good shape. Now, what, one thing I'll notice is that just above that island there, you see the word detected, and there's an airplane symbol. symbol. Um, torpedoes are coming here. Uh, what that means is that there's an airplane that's got Joe spotted for the enemy team. As long as that's the case, this destroyer can continue to put shells on him. Now, what you want to do here is you want to look at where the shells are coming from out of the smoke and aim in the middle of those. And what Joe did was fire too far to the right on one side of where the shells are coming from and too far to the left on the other. Now his secondaries might get the Gaida here, but I don't think so. Almost certainly there will be torpedoes coming from the Gaida. And probably torpedoes about now coming from Icarus. I think this is going to be it for the Gaida. That looks pretty good. Nicely done, Joe. Oh my goodness. How did he get through that? Yeah, he's not going to survive that. And Joe is just turning right around and saying, come on. 
And, and if you've been paying attention to other things going on, good guys still have four ships. Uh, a lot of that on the back of Joe tying up these destroyers for half the game now. And uh, the bad guys only have two, and I think Joe might just blap this Icarus. This is over in 15 seconds tops, so I'm going to right now say, uh, Joe, fantastic job, man. <laughs> and really, really fun to watch. This Icarus is going to try and sink you. Uh, if he does, it would be good for his team, but it's not going to happen. Thanks again, Joe, and thanks for joining me, everybody. I'll see you next time.